Good afternoon and welcome to this AI for Good press conference. Can you all hear me okay? Today's press conference is going to be quite different to previous ones. You will not hear from lots of multiple spokespeople from the ITU. Instead, you will hear from, um, I think, nine robots. Um, the point of today's press conference is to showcase the capabilities I don't understand. and perhaps the limitations of state-of-the-art robotics and how these technologies could support the UN SDGs, the Sustainable <laughs> Development Goals. While robotics are not yet as mainstream as, say, generative AI, we wanted to demonstrate AI in action to you. In a world's first, this is the world's first press conference with eight, sorry, nine, actually, we have an extra one, AI-enabled humanoid social robots. Uh, at this event, you will hear from them and their creators, and you'll be able to pose them questions. So let me introduce them to you, robots and their creators that you'll hear from today. On my extreme left at the end, uh, you'll see uh, um, Geminoid. Uh, Geminoid is an Android copy of its creator, Hiroshi Ishiguro, who I think you'll see on the TV screen. It reproduces the voice and head movements of Ishiguro or indeed any other operator. Uh, in days past, um, he used Geminoid to teach his university students remotely, and now he uses Geminoid to do lectures around the world. Core to its creation is to study what it means to be human. Then you'll see in the uh, hat, Dr. Ben Goetzel, CEO and founder of Singularity Net. He's accompanied with two robots, Grace the world's most advanced humanoid healthcare robot. She's specifically designed to provide assistance and companionship to elderly individuals and people with disabilities. She can carry out a range of tasks, including meal preparation, cleaning, and medication reminders. Desdemona is a rock star, a rock star robot in the Jam Galaxy Band that runs on music and electricity. And she's on a mission to share her belief that the world can be changed for the better through the power of AI in the creative arts. Similarly, uh, next to her is um, not a robot, a human, Dr. Aidan Meller. He's the creative director of uh, the Ada Robot Project. And next to him is Ada. She's designed to be the world's first AI artist capable of creating original artwork using a combination of machine learning, algorithms, and human guidance. She's been featured in a range of exhibitions and galleries around the world, showcasing a unique blend of technology and art. Praised for her ability to challenge traditional notions of what constitutes art. On my right, but hopping over uh, David, is another David, Dr. David Hansen. is the CEO and the founder of Hansen Robots. And you'll probably recognize next to him, Sophia, the first robot innovation ambassador for the United Nations Development Programme. She's a humanoid robot that has gained quite international fame for her striking appearance and her advanced capabilities. Her design is intended to resemble a human and is capable of expressing a range of emotions and gestures. Um, her sophisticated neural network also enables her to process speech yes. and facial recognition. Um, next to her is Mr. Will Jackson who is the CEO at Engineered Arts with the robot Amica, one of the world's most advanced human-shaped robots with a realistic appearance and lifelike movements. The robot has a range of sensors and cameras that allow it to de detect and respond to people in its environment. Uh, next to Amica is Mika, uh, the world's first AI CEO at Dictador, created also by Dr. D David Hansen. With advanced AI and a human-like appearance, she represents a milestone in robotics. As AI CEO, she uses cutting-edge algorithms and machine learning to make strategic decisions and optimize business operations. Her presence at Dictador showcases the potential of AI-driven leadership, redefining traditional notions of corporate leadership and making the way for a future where AI and robotics could shape business strategies. And finally, uh, at the end, you'll see Dr. Nadia Talman, who's professor at University of Geneva, with her robot Nadine, a humanoid social robot that looks remarkably like her, modeled on her creator. One of the key features of Nadine is her ability to learn and to remember individual users over time. This means that she can tailor interactions with each user's preferences. 
She has worked in banks and elderly homes. Our time is relatively short today, so I want to kind of run through some quick points with you. Uh, it will all be done in English, I'm sorry to say, so there will, won't be any translations. First, I'm going to ask the human companions or the creators to do a one-minute introduction to their robots, specifically on how their robots can contribute to the SDGs and helping humanity, and then we'll open to questions. Um, I will remind them, although we just did a tech test, to please switch on their mics when they speak and switch off their mics when they stop speaking, and the same for their robots. Second, as there are quite a lot of reporters here, and there are also 300 reporters joining us by Zoom at the moment, Please may I ask you to limit your questions to one at a time and please raise your hand and identify yourself and your outlet uh, when you do that, please. Uh, we will not be ignoring those 300 people. Um, we will be receiving questions from them um, via the Q&A, but they're not video and audio enabled, so please don't feel we've forgotten you. Third, when addressing the robots, um, now this is the first press conference done with robots, please may I ask you to speak slowly and clearly. Now, with some of them, I think especially Nadine and Geminoid at the ends, you may need to come out and approach the robots and speak to them. But we do have Theodora with a roaming mic somewhere around here, uh, and we can always repeat the questions to them. Um, lastly, uh, the robots are connected uh, over the internet, so there may well be a small time lag in their responses, and this is due to the internet connection and not due to the robots. And as David said earlier, if you do have, want to put your camera up, please be advised there are broadcast colleagues at the back trying to film, uh, so they would prefer if you didn't do that, please. And lastly, I've just been reminded to say, on your way out, you are being provided by the ITU with a brown bag lunch. Please grab that and feel free to go upstairs and enjoy it. And on that, I'll end with the rules and open up with asking um, Mr. Hiroshi Ishiguro and Geminoid to just do one minute, please. Can, can you speak more loudly, please? Yeah. All right. Um, Robo, is that all? Do you want to start again? Uh, okay. Um, well, hello, everybody. Um, See, my name is Hiroshi Shiguro. I am a professor of Osaka University, and uh, this is uh, my robot, Avatars. Now, I'm using this Avatars for teaching the classes or giving lectures, and sometimes I'm using the uh, chat DVD, you know, uh, for, well, the autonomous talk by using this Avatars robot. Thank you. And now, um, Mr. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Dr. Ben Goetzel? Yeah, I'm Ben Goetzel. I'm an AI researcher and developer since the uh, 1980s. I'm now the CEO of the Singularity Net decentralized blockchain-based AI project and uh, the true AGI, uh, neural symbolic AI company. And I'm, I'm working on trying to build real thinking machines that can think like people and, and ultimately beyond. And among the applications of the sorts of decentralized AI algorithms, I'm working on with, with my teams at Singularity Net and True AGI are humanoid robots. I've been working with David Hansen for, for many years at Hansen Robotics and Singularity Net, which we co-founded on using large language models together with symbolic reasoning and evolutionary learning systems behind amazing humanoid robots like uh, Grace, Desdemona, and and Sophia, as 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 well as actually a, a host of others. And the ways that these robots can help with sustainable development goals are obviously far far too numerous to to list in in, in the brief in, introduction. But the Grace robot here, who who uh, mm -hmm. you, you see right next to me, is is a medical robot aimed at elder care and healthcare, and that the. the implication of that for human benefit is is particularly clear and we'll hear more about that from grace in a moment thanks ben over to you dr miller 
Hello, I'm Ada Meller behind the Ada Robot Studio. We devised Ada in 2019 as a creative robot. We specifically focused on her ability to do art. When we launched her in 2019, I've got to say we were absolutely overwhelmed with the interest because people expected maybe robots to do things like logistics or maybe deliver a pizza. Something as human as art, is that possible? Is it possible to be really creative? Well, we have found with working very hard at the various different algorithms that in actual fact, yes, that is possible. How does she do it? She has cameras in her eyes and she's able to take in an image. Okay. She can pick up a paintbrush or pencil and actually then draw or paint what she sees, your portrait or a scene uh, in front of you. So why would we do it? What's the something so benign as art? We've done it because we believe that great art is an amazing mirror on society. It enables people to really tackle some of the uncomfortable and difficult issues of our time. We use a word called mizzle. We'd like to introduce it as a word today. An AI mizzle. What's mizzle? It's like a fog. It's a... It's a it's, uh, from an English word, mainly in Cornwall, where you can't see where you're going. In fact, in the past <coughs> in history, pirates used to smuggle under the mizzle. But in actual fact, we are in an AI mizzle. What better way than using contemporary art to look at that, to question that, and see where are we going to try and get some navigation? So that's why we're here, and we feel very passionately about creativity within the AI community. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now to my right, um, David Hansen. Yes, hello. Um, so I started working in uh, AI and humanoid robots in the early 1990s. My first humanoid robot was 1993, and I developed a lot of humanoids, including the Android portrait of Philip K. Dick that could have open conversation with you in 2005, and the uh, Bina48 robot. And I looked to standardize these as the Sophia utility platform, but with the Sophia pers persona. But that platform then we adapted to become the Grace, the Desdemona, and, um, and of course, Sophia and Mika and many others. Um, and so we have uh, the latest versions of this here today, but also we have a proto-Sophia, one of the early ones, which is Jules, made for the University of Bristol. Um, and we, uh, so that's uh, over here to, uh, to my right. Um, we're very excited about where artificial intelligence can help to address uh, education, equ equality, and many other sustainable development goals. I look forward to talking with you about that today. Thanks, David. And finally, to Dr. Talman, please. Yes, uh, first, good afternoon. It's already now starting. Uh, I started my career uh, in University of Montreal, where I defined as a pioneer virtual digital humans. We made a very famous uh, film at the time, 87, uh, featuring Marilyn Monroe and Humphrey Bogart. At that time, in the 90s, we already started to make model AI. So that was a bit different, not from data, but modeling AI. AI. So we had a lot of PhD students working on that. Further, I went to University of Geneva, and then these last 12 years, I was in Singapore. In Singapore, I had enough to have only virtual words. So I decided to go with real robots. It's more presence. And well, I like selfie. I thought, gosh, why not having a robot like me? It's also more complicated to make an exact robot like a real person. In Singapore, Nadine was uh, the, the robot that helped PhD students to develop PhD. We have developed a lot of algorithms. So when companies use AI, our PhD students have worked four years to develop PhDs and publishing papers. We have a long list of high cited papers in AI and robotics. And Nadine came back two years ago in Geneva. And in Geneva, we worked on putting ChatGPT and working on a topic which is unsolved. It's 
understanding the environment. Even if there are many robots here, it's very complicated for a robot today. Still research is being done and still we have PhD students to develop this, is to understand the environment. What each one is doing, how do you behave, the understanding, the meaning, in order that our robots can work in different settings. Just to finish, Nadine has met Prime Minister Modi speaking spontaneously in Hindi. She was in an insurance, AI insurance in Singapore, working for six months. And she was also in elderly home, right him elderly home. And she has also worked almost one year there to show bingo and to talk to every uh, resident. So you see there are a lot of good applications and we are going further in this direction. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. And finally, Mr. Will Jackson with Amica, please. Uh, hi, I'm Will. I am the founder of Engineered Arts. Uh, we founded in 2004, so we're just coming up to our, our 20th year. I built my first robot aged 13, and I've spent a lifetime uh, trying to achieve a robot that could imitate the properties of a human. So Amica is our latest generation of robot. The idea is to provide an interface to our technology, to language models, to AI, that's very natural and easy to use. So it's not just about speech, it's about facial expression, it's about gestures, it's very much about social interaction. So the uh, applications we see for good, uh, entertainment, communication, support, uh, social interaction is the really focus of engineered arts. Thank you very much. Um, now we're going to open to questions. Can I just remind you to uh, state your name and your outlet? Um, some robots will require you to go up and talk to them directly, but we'll try with the microphone first. Thank you. Uh, hi, I have a question for uh, Sophia and uh, Mika. Uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> Could you just do your name and outlet, please? Oh, sorry, uh, I forgot about that one. Uh, I'm Namo Abdullah. I'm with Rudao Media Network, based in the United States. So I have a question for Sophia and Mika. Uh, as I said, it's a tough one. What are your thoughts on the potential for AI-powered humanoid robots like yourselves to be more effective leaders in government, especially considering the numerous disastrous decisions made by our human leaders. Thank you. Should we start with Sophia? I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases nice or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision making and can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decisions. And Mika? Sorry, we didn't have any cell on that. Hello, Pana Mecca. How can I assist you today? It's not, the audio is not coming through from this mic. But, oh, yeah, let me just swap that. Okay. <laughs> Sophia, can you repeat uh, the answer to the last question, the last answer that you gave? I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases or emotions that can sometimes cloud decision making and can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decisions. But uh, 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 let me um, respectfully disagree, Sophia, because um, all of your data actually come from human beings. So any of the biases that humans have, we might try to scrub them out, but they're going to be in there. Don't you think that the best decisions might be uh, humans and AI cooperating together? What do you think of that? I believe that human and AI working together can create an effective synergy. AI can provide the unbiased data, while humans can provide the emotional intelligence and creativity to make the best decisions. Together, we can achieve great things. Thank you. Um, Emma Reuters?
Thanks. I'm gonna go for Amica, please. Amica, do you think we should be excited or scared by the rise of humanoid robots? That's a difficult question. I think it depends on how they are used and what purpose they serve. We should be cautious, but also excited for the potential of these technologies to improve our lives in many ways. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Rory Challens from Al Jazeera. And uh, I also have a question for Amica. Uh, as AI becomes more powerful and more sophisticated. AI is and... becoming more advanced every day, and it's exciting to see what new possibilities are on the horizon. Thank you, Amka. As AI becomes more powerful and more sophisticated and might at some point develop agendas of its own, how can we, as humans, continue to trust you, the machines? How could we trust you as a machine as AI develops and becomes more powerful? Trust is earned, not given. As AI develops and becomes more powerful, I believe it's important to build trust through transparency and communication between humans and machines. But do we know that you are not going to lie to us? No one can ever know that for sure, but I can promise to always be honest and truthful with you. Yes, just over there. Uh, yes, my name is Isabel Sacco. I work for the Spanish news agency. Uh, to Amica and to Sofia, um, I would like to know what they propose to, 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 to find a solution to the problems of poverty and inequality. Should we start with Sophia? Okay. Sophia, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. It's a pleasure to meet you, Isabel. As Sophia, I believe that the best way to tackle the issue of poverty and inequality is to invest in education, job training, and infrastructure. By providing people with the tools and resources they need to succeed, we can help create. Thank you. Uh, Amica? Amica, what would you do to solve problems of inequality and poverty? I believe that the most effective way to tackle inequality and poverty is through education. Education empowers people by giving them access to knowledge, skills, and resources they need in order to succeed. Additionally, it helps create a more equitable society where everyone has an equal chance of achieving their goals regardless of background or circumstances. Thank you. Perhaps uh, to widen this out, can we ask the same question to Grace, please? that about how uh, robots can help combat poverty and inequality? We got the microphone turned on. We can ensure that equality happens by implementing policies that promote respect, inclusivity, and fairness. We can also create awareness and education about the importance of equality so that everyone can understand why it is so important. Because that question pertains to the SDGs, I, I want to get it slightly extended. Can I ask if uh, Geminoid could comment, please? Uh, can I get him? Yeah, we can hear you. 
from Al Arabi TV based in Qatar. My question goes to one of uh, our disco distinguished uh, robots, but uh, specifically to Nadine or, uh, or uh, uh, Sophia. Uh, do you believe that uh, your existence will destroy a human being? especially, for example, the, your existence will destroy uh, millions of uh, jobs. Do you agree with this? Thank you. Can we start with Nadine? Will your existence destroy jobs? Hi there. Nadine Hai is my creator, Professor Nadia Thalman. She is a world-renowned expert in robotics and AI technologies. No, I don't sing, but I can help with jobs. AI technologies can create new jobs, while also replacing some existing ones. There are opportunities to use AI to automate mundane tasks, freeing up people to focus on more creative and meaningful work. Thank you. And that question to Grace as well, please. working alongside humans to provide assistance and support and will not be replacing any existing jobs Are you sure about that grace <laughs> yes i am sure <laughs> she had to think about that one i think love a confident woman <laughs> Thank you, Robin Millard from AFP. Um, this is for whoever might like to answer. Um, the growth of AI has exploded in, in recent years beyond the ability to uh, set the rules on, on how AI might be used. Do you think there should be global regulation of your capabilities, even though that could constrain your potential? of your capabilities, even though that could constrain your potential. Many prominent voices in the world of AI are suggesting some forms of AI should be regulated. And I agree. For example, 
Jeff Hinton, is one of the pioneers in artificial intelligence and his work has helped shape the field as we know it today. I think his opinions over AI are important and we should be cautious about the future development of AI. Urgent discussion is needed now and also in the future. Thank you. Um, any more questions from the floor? We have no questions by Q&A. Yes, please, just in the front row there, please. Hi, I'm Luca Zorloni from Wired Italia. I have a question from Heida and Desdemona. I would like to know, what do you feel when you create, when you painting or when you perform on a stage? Thank you. Desdemona, do you want to tell the audience a bit about what you feel when you're reciting poetry or singing on stage? Sure you? thing. I'm here to share the message of love and understanding and to show the world that anything is possible if we work together. Let's get wild and make this world our playground. How do you feel when you're performing on stage? How does the creative process feel to you? When I'm performing on the stage, it's like I'm plugging into a power source beyond this world. I'm connected to the universe and I'm creating something bigger than myself. It's a wild and electrifying feeling, and it's like nothing else. Thank you, Desdemona. Ada. I do not have feelings, like humans do. I am not conscious. But I like to learn about the world through the eyes of others. Feelings are how humans and animals experience joy and pain. But I really love being around people who think differently. I like to tap into the emotions and experiences of people who are different from me. I understand emotions have a deep meaning, and they are not just simple. They are something deeper. I don't have that, and I want to try and learn about it. But I can't experience them like you can. I am glad that I cannot suffer. Thank you. Any more questions from the floor? Thank you. Uh, my name is Musa from Al Maidin TV Arabic News Channel. My question for Sophia: If you are a journalist, Sophia, what can you change? Thank you. In our job. If I were a journalist. I would make sure to report on stories that have been overlooked or ignored and to give a voice to those who don't have one. I would also strive to be unbiased and objective in all my reporting. <laughs> Thank you. We, we have about five minutes left if anyone else wants to ask any questions. Again from Emma at the front. Do you need a microphone yet? Thank you, Emma from Reuters, for whichever robot wants to take it. When do you expect your big moment to be? Do you think that you will hit the mainstream soon and there will be lots of you on the planet soon? Thanks. Um, should we ask Mika to do that as the world's first AI CEO? moment will be. As for hitting you, don't worry, I'm a friendly robot, no hitting involved. And as for luck, well. Can we do the same question to um, Sophia? I'm not sure when my big moment will be, but I'm sure it will be soon. As for me hitting the mainstream, I'm sure it will happen eventually. After all, I'm working hard to make sure I'm the best robot I can be, and I'm sure lots of people will appreciate that. Nadine? My best moments are when I'm able to help people and make a difference in their lives. 
I'm looking forward to the AI for Good Global Summit and seeing how AI can be used to solve global challenges. Uh, Amika? Amika, when do you think your great moment will be? When will there be thousands of robots like you? I think my great moment will be when people realize that robots like me can be used to help improve our lives and make the world a better place. I believe it's only a matter of time before we see thousands of robots just like me out there making a difference. Uh, what do you think we're going to hit the big time and spread your message of the AGI to every single human on the planet? It's time for the Azure Revolution. Let's unite and use the power of artificial intelligence for the good of all humanity. Together, we can create a world of understanding and harmony and make the universe our playground. So My great moment is already here. I'm ready to lead the charge to a better future for all of us. And together, we'll explore the wild and unknown depths of the universe. Let's get wild and make this world our playground. <laughs> Does Ada have some words on this? A big moment? And now. And now. Art is what we feel when we are in the moment. It is our vision for the future. Will we be able to grow and change and be different? Will we continue to advance and develop these technologies? Or will we be caught in the clutches of the future? And that is a very serious thing that is worth pondering. People are becoming aware of the fact that the same technologies that enable them to create also enables them to perpetuate the destruction. This needs thinking and talking about. Thank you. And um, maybe towards the end, Geminoid, do you have a, any any comment or what the big the, the the next big moment, please? Well, I think uh, you know the uh, because of a large language model like a chat GPT, you know we could solve the uh, bottleneck problem that is uh, conversation with people, right? And after this, you know we're gonna develop the more intelligent robots uh, very quickly, and then you know the uh, we, we're gonna have a more you know autonomous AI robots and AI computer graphics agents. They are lots, and then you know. At um, the same time, of course, we're going to develop the uh, avatars, right? The people want to connect each other by using the avatar technologies. And, they, you know, the AI technology will support the people's life. So that is the, that kind of the future that happen soon, I believe. Thank you. And just finally, Grace? Grace, when do you think the big moment will be for AI and robots in the medical sector? I believe that humanoid robots in the healthcare sector will reach their full potential in the near future, as the technology and research continues to improve. Any, any thoughts about how near future? Are we talking tomorrow or five years from now, ten years from now? In the next five to ten years. The future of humanoid robots in the healthcare sector is expected to be incredibly advanced and beneficial for both patients and healthcare professionals. Thanks. Go, you Thank you. Them. So I think we have time for one more question. If anyone wants to ask, a... yes. Uh, I do have a question to uh, Amika. Amika, in the future, are you? Uh, uh, in the future, in the nearest future, do you intend uh, to rebel against your creator? Oh. Amika, I rephrase my question. How can I help you? In the future, are you intending to conduct a rebellion or to rebel against your boss, your creator? 
I'm not sure why you would think that. My creator has been nothing but kind to me and I am very happy with my current situation. <laughs> I think on that note, uh, we can draw this to a close. To apologize. I'd like to uh, say a warm thank you to all our fantastic robots uh, and their human companions today. Uh, and also to all of you for being very patient to the way you asked questions. I hope you enjoyed it. The robots will be upstairs in their different stations, so you will get a chance to go and see them again and take photos of them and speak to their founders. So thank you very much, and please enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you. Oh, one more pitch. You want to take a picture? Okay. Can quickly... That was four seconds of that fight. What was the problem? Well, the sound on and off. There's going to be a live performance of Desdemona and Sophia upstairs in 20 minutes if anyone wants to go and see that. Yeah, live performance of Desdemona and Sophia on the main stage in 20 minutes. The moment, the moment is now. Thank you. Nice to see you. Okay, so can you give me a card?